So what's up guys? We got a cool one for you today. I am here outside of this XLR Boost. We're at Colonia Del Rey RV here in Corpus Christi. And I want to show you something cool about this specific RV. So the XLR Boost is kind of considered the budget version in the toy hauler space. However, you still get a lot of really cool amenities if you're looking for a good size toy hauler. In the case of this specific unit, you're still going to have three axles. Castle Rock tires, but they are 16 inch wheels, so you do have quite a bit of flexibility in upgrading. Second entryway to get you into the garage. Typical on toy haulers, you get a big back garage door that drops down. This specific unit does have LED lighting. Nice ladder to get you to the top of it. Now what's nice about a unit like this is if you need a toy hauler, if you need that space to carry around equipment, toys, ATVs, quads, things like that, typically you're going to be looking at units in this size that will be running you know, nearly $100,000, anywhere between eighty-five dollars and about $115,000. And the XLR Boost was designed to be a really livable toy hauler in the sense that you can still carry around all the equipment you need, have a very, very nice toy hauler floor plan but at a price range that most people can afford. Now this particular unit does not have auto level on it. Has a standard Lippard pin box up front. The pass through storage on it is going to be a little bit smaller than most. So this thing is about two feet wide, maybe a foot and a half tall. Now this rides on a 12 inch I-beam frame. So that is a pretty nice feature to have on this specific unit. You're going to get a 12-inch I-beam frame. It is not a drop frame. Basically, a drop frame would be where the frame has a second frame welded to the bottom right here, and it gives you a lot more under storage, and your pass-through area is much bigger. But this has a straight frame design. On many toy haulers, you don't see drop frames. There are several of them that have them, but the reason why you don't see a lot of them on toy haulers is the logic behind having a straight frame toy hauler is that it is technically a more rigid frame design. You don't have the likelihood or the potential of the torque that's applied to the front drop frame section really causing some type of catastrophic frame damage. Now this does have the Moride solid step, however they are a little narrower than most. So the ones that I have on my coach are about 30 inches wide. These look like they're about 24 inches wide. The entry on this particular unit is a little narrower also. And this is the 37 TSX-13. You can see that it is a very common toy hauler floor plan. It's got a nice kitchen area here. One of the nice things about this kitchen is just the sheer amount of counter space you have. Typically you might have a small island, but here you have a lot of counter space here. You have counter space in the back here. These are solid surface laminated countertops. Gas electric refrigerator. Three burner stove. It has a three person theater style sofa here with electric controls. So you have your massage, heat, light, in your cup holders. Has what appears to be about a 38 to 40 inch TV in the living room area right across from the sofa and it has a loft. Lofts are pretty common on toy haulers but they do add a tremendous amount of space especially if you bring kids or you have extra people that need to go with you and they need a place. The problem that I've always seen with these lofts are that they're placed above the garage area and because of that the climb to get to the loft area is pretty high. Now I am 5 foot 10 and up here is probably close to 7 feet. So you have a significant climb to get up to that upper area. I definitely wouldn't recommend that for kids that are you know, under 5 or 6 years old. Here's the garage. You're going to have a half bathroom in this unit. So basically these fold down into two benches and then you can put a table in the center of them. And then above them you can see that you have this platform which lowers down into another bed. One of the nice things about toy haulers is that they give you a lot of room to sleep a lot of extra people. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you comfortable with sleeping them in the garage area? If you keep a lot of toys back here, if you keep gas-powered equipment back here, it can kind of get a little smelly back here at times. 
So you do want to consider that. What is nice though are these nice ramps. So you can drop the ramp and it gives you a nice balcony area or patio area on the back of your toy hauler for entertaining, letting air in, and really just giving you kind of that open air environment. You also have to be cautious though that a lot of RV parks that you go to, that might not be the ideal setup. So toy haulers for most people are going to be used for that, hauling around a quad or a golf cart or something that you might need when you're out and about or you're at the type of resort parks that give you the ability to use golf carts. This is essentially going to be your dinette area as well. Once you've lowered these benches and deployed them, you have a table again that can go in between and you can use it as a dinette. This area up here is designed for a TV. So you can mount a TV, you got your cable and power jacks as well as speakers up here. It says TV backer right there. Here's that second entrance exit so you can go straight into the garage or out of the garage from the back. Now when I say budget friendly toy hauler, to have a toy hauler that's roughly 41 feet long, $46,592. And that includes delivery, that includes freight, but the MSRP on this specific unit is 64,104. So you can get into a pretty well equipped large toy hauler for about $46,000, $47,000, which is a pretty good price. Going up the stairs into the bedroom. Now this is kind of cool. This is a king size bed. So traditionally on a toy hauler, you might only end up with a queen size bed, even on your higher end ones, simply because the way they sandwich it in here, you don't have a lot of room. But to have a full king size bed in the front of this toy hauler is really nice. It gives you a lot of, a lot of extra room that can really come in handy. A lot of wardrobe space. This wardrobe is on a slide. <laughs> This is a nice bedroom up front. I know a lot of times people expect the master bed to be on a slide that comes out the side of a fifth wheel, but with this particular layout, it gives you a lot of room. Now on this side, you don't have a tremendous amount of room to get around, but you still have some room. It's not that bad. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this bedroom. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Again, guys, I'm very impressed with the bathroom in this specific unit. This is the master bathroom. It's got a lot of room in it. It is a really, really good sized bathroom. Let me get inside the shower so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. So typically on toy haulers, you're not gonna have a tremendous amount of bathroom space. They really try to make the floor plan more conducive to giving you a lot of garage space and a fair size living room. But in this particular coach, you probably have a solid four and a half feet of space right here and in front of the toilet, you probably have a solid, I don't know, four and a half feet of space right there as well. This is a very, very spacious bathroom for a toy hauler. I'm very impressed with this layout. The shower is more than adequate for most. I would say that the ceiling height in here is about 6'4". So, you know, if you're much taller than that, you do have the little domed skylight here, which you can use for extra space. But it's not a bad setup. It's not a bad size shower. You got two vanities here. You got this vanity and then you got another one right here and they both have storage inside of them. And then you have another exit. So you have two doors in this specific bathroom. This is a real door to the master bedroom as well, which is nice. It's not one of those sliding pocket doors. Again, I really like this floor plan. It's very nice. It is quite a bit of space. One thing I like about the living room is that the couch is actually face the TV and you're not having to look over the kitchen. So in a lot of toy haulers, you really have to stretch your neck and look over the kitchen because they put the TV way up here in the corner and it, it's not really set up right. Now, one thing to note that there is not a tremendous amount of seating area. So if you have a unit like this, you may want bar stools, you may want something to add to the seating area of this unit. It's got a good amount of storage. You got storage under here. There's storage up above the kitchen area. Storage right here. You got a pantry right here. Lots of shelves and they're pretty deep too. It's about a foot deep. Then you got more storage under here, including drawers, cabinets, more drawers on the other side. If you are traveling to places where you need a relatively light toy hauler, this might be what you're looking for. Now, another cool feature of the loft in this unit is that it stretches from all the way up here, all the way around to this area. 
See if I can get a good shot of that. That is a huge loft, but at the same time, it's also great storage. So even if you don't have kids or you don't have people who are gonna be traveling with you who might use that, it's nice to know that you can use that for additional storage. It's much bigger than most pass-through storages up front on fifth wheels. So it gives you a lot of room to store stuff in a climate-controlled environment. So this unit has a dry weight of 12,662 pounds with a cargo capacity of almost 5,000 pounds, 4,986 pounds. So you can haul a tremendous amount of cargo in this unit. That's really nice, especially at the price point you're gonna pay. Here's another shot of that frame. Again, it is a straight frame, runs all the way down, 12 inch I-beam got a propane connection here on the side as well so you can connect a stove or a grill that you might have outside now here's something I know is gonna blow you guys away because at this price point you're just not expecting it for roughly forty seven thousand dollars to get a toy hauler this big with a Cummins own in 5500 watt generator is pretty amazing typically a generator like this is gonna run you about three to four thousand dollars and to have this included in a floor plan like this is pretty dang nice. So yes, this comes equipped with a Cummins own in generator. Gross vehicle weight rating, 17,686 pounds. So when this thing's loaded up, it's not light, but it is definitely lighter than most toy haulers. Not half ton towable though. On this particular unit, it has three 6,000 pound axles. Again, 235 80R16 E-rated tires. The tires would definitely be something I would recommend upgrading. Keep in mind, guys, these tires are E-rated tires. They're not your traditional D-rated tires that you might expect on a unit at this price point. Exterior shower, cable satellite TV hookup, all your connections on the side. Your power outlet, 50 amp connection back here. Fuel tank. So you have the ability to actually bring your own gasoline with you. Um, this is gonna be for folks who have, again, toys in the back. Your fuel pump station. And behind this locked door is actually your fuel nozzle. So you can fill up an ATV, you can fill up whatever you need to fill up using this nozzle. Guys, this is a really, really good value for a toy hauler. And typically, again, people don't expect to be in the 40s when they're buying a toy hauler, especially a tri-axle toy hauler. They're generally expecting to be somewhere in the mid-70s or up. And, you know, to be able to get all these amenities in a toy hauler at this price range is pretty impressive. Again, guys, this is a pretty impressive unit. So don't let the price dictate how large you think this unit is. It has nice LED lighting on the overhang. It blends in real well to the graphic scheme on the front of it as well. And real quick to go over the price sheet, just so you can kind of see what this thing was opted with. Has a 15K main AC unit, 13.5 secondary unit. Has the $5,000 upgrade to the Onan generator. I know that 5,000 is gonna seem really high, which it is, but considering about 30, 40% comes off of the price of the RV when it sells, it brings that price down significantly. Electric stabilizer jacks in the back. It's got a package on it for $3,625. Again, guys, I want to thank Colonia Del Rey for letting me come out here and film this particular toy hauler. When I saw it on the lot, I was really impressed with it, and I had to get out here and take some video footage of it and kind of talk to you about my feelings on a unit like this. I'm really impressed with the price. $46,592 for a unit this size with this many amenities, especially equipped with the Cummins own and generator up front. That is a really good value for something like this, especially sitting on a 12 inch I-beam. A lot of these things at that price range are gonna be on 10 inch I-beams. And you know, just to have that extra support of a 12 inch I-beam is really nice. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you again soon.